So when I went to this camp in Pennsylvania, Camp Montrose, I used to go there at eight, nine, ten years of age for the whole summer, actually, months, two months at a time, sleep, sleep away camp. And uh, when I went to this particular camp, all male camp, and when we got there, they told us, the counselors said that, they told us a, a scary story. They said that there were two twin brothers, and one of them robbed a bank and blamed his other brother. And the other brother was hung. And every year in July, when the day approached of the day of the hanging, the brother who blamed his brother, well, the, the, the one who was hung, would walk the earth looking for his brother, Aza Fisk. And he would walk the earth, Aza Fisk. And on that day, it would rain sheets. And would you believe that when that day approached, it was raining sheets. And they had a little contest in the camp. And they said, if you will walk down this long driveway from the camp and then turn down this dirt road, vacant dirt road in the mountains with trees and walk down that road all the way to the end and come back, you could win this money. So I thought, I want to do that. I want to do that. So when the day came, it was raining, like they said. And I can remember as if yesterday, walking down this long entrance to the camp, hearing my poncho dragging on the ground, all alone, and then turning down that dirt road where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. You had to follow the sky to find your way. And then when I got up to the right, I saw a glowing figure. And it was the ghost of the man with a big steel kettle. And something in me knew that that wasn't really anything to be afraid of. But they also told us that in the mountains of Pennsylvania, there were moonshiners making illegal whiskey. And they hid and stayed in that old broken down house near the ghost. And that every year they would kidnap little boys and put them in burlap sacks. And so I was walking down the road and all of a sudden I heard three guys and I could hear what sounded like a drunk person. Oh, oh, oh. And I stopped. And then I got pushed to the ground and I, I stayed there silent. And I climbed into the ditch. And I had an idea. I'm going to stay in this ditch all night long. And in the morning, I'm going to rescue those other kids in the little burlap sacks. And as I was laying there in the dark, what seemed like hours later, I could hear some people walking on the path and then a light shining on my face from a flashlight. It was the counselor. <laughs> and I was rescued, I was saved, and they brought me back to the cabin and all the other little 10-year-olds were in their bunks ready to go to bed wondering what on earth was I doing that evening because all the rest of the kids were much older. I was the only 10-year-old, or whatever age I was, to take that little journey. But you know what? Facing such grave danger gave me such a feeling of confidence. And I had such an exciting story I could tell not only did the counselors and the other little kids in my mind admire me for such bravery, but that feeling encouraged me over the years to feel the fear and do it anyway.